Good morning everyone. Today we will study chapter 13 Force and Energy. In this chapter we will study about force. Force means a push or a pull applied on an object. In this chapter we will study about the effects that force can produce. And then we will study different types of force. After that we will study what is energy and we will see the different forms of energy. And lastly, we will study about simple machines. So, let's start the chapter. Force is defined as a push or a pull applied on an object. Now, let us understand what is push or pull. Here, as you can see in this image, push means to exert force on any object so as to move the object away from oneself. And pull means to apply force on any object to move the object towards oneself. This figure, it is clearly showing push and pull. Okay, I hope now push and pull is clear. So the force is a push or a pull applied on an object. Force cannot be seen but the effects of the force that can be seen. So let us learn about the effects that force can produce. Number one, force can make an object move. Yes, force can move any, move any object. For example, force acting on a stationary object can make it move. Stationary object means the object that is at rest. That means the object that is not moving. Stationary object is the object that is at rest. If the force is applied on a stationary object, it can move that object. And if the force is applied on any moving object, it can move that object faster. But the force should be applied in the same direction of the motion of the object. That means if, a fo if force is applied on a moving object in the direction of the motion of the object, then this force can move the object faster. For example, a football player kicks a ball to make it move. And here in the figure you can see a boy push, pushes a cart to make it forward. Number two is force can stop a moving object. If the force is applied on a moving object in the direction opposite to the direction of motion, then that force can either slow down the object or it can stop the object completely. Force can change the direction of a moving object. A force acting on a moving object from an angle can change the direction in which the object is moving. That means if the force is applied on a moving, ob on a moving object, in it can change the direction of the motion of the object. For example, in the cricket matches, we all have seen that when a bowler throws the ball towards the batsman and when batsman hits the ball with the force, it changes the direction of the motion of ball. So, force can change the direction of a moving object. Force can change the shape of an object. Yes, a force acting on an object, it can change the shape of the object. In our day-to-day -day life, we all have seen that when the Force is applied on the dough bowls. The dough bowls, they are usually round in shape. When the force is applied on the dough bowls with the help of the rolling pin, the rolling pin makes the ball of the dough flat and round. And the, another example is of the sponge. When we squeeze the sponge, so what we are doing, when we are squeezing a sponge, that means we are applying force on the sponge. So we can see in this picture, when we squeeze a sponge, its shape gets changed. So, this was all about the effects of the forces. Now, we will study about types of force. Various types of forces exist in nature. Some of them are discussed below. First one is gravitational force. Gravitational force or gravity is the force with which all the objects in the universe attract each other. Gravitational force of the earth pulls objects towards its center and this is the reason that any object that is thrown upwards, it always comes down because of the Earth's gravity. We have seen that Earth, it applies a pull force on all the objects. And Earth pulls objects towards its 
center here as we can see in this example the fruits they always fall down on the ground they never rises up in the sky because it happens because of the earth's gravity because earth's gravity it pulls all the objects towards its center here in this image you can see that the ball has been this football it has been thrown upwards but because of the earth's gravity all the objects that are thrown upwards all the objects that are thrown upward they comes down because of the earth's gravity and now if we talk about the direction of the gravitational force then gravitational force it always acts in the opposite direction when the object is moving away from the earth as you can see here this ball is moving away from the earth so in this case the gravitational force it will act in the opposite direction okay and if we take this example when the object it is moving towards the earth when the object is moving towards the earth then the gravitational force it acts along the direction of the motion of the object that means in this case when the object is moving towards the earth then gravitational force it also it also acts in the direction of the motion of the object but now we'll study about electrostatic force the attractive or repulsive force that acts due to presence of charges that is called electrostatic force electrostatic force means the attractive or repulsive force that acts due to presence of the charges let us try to understand electrostatic force with the help of the activity so the materials will be required for this activity plastic ruler and bits of paper place bits of paper on a table now take plastic ruler and rub the plastic ruler against your hair make sure that the hair is dry now bring the plastic ruler near the bits of paper and now observe what will happen you will notice that the bits of paper they will move towards the plastic ruler that means the bits of paper they will be attracted towards the plastic ruler now the question come why it happened because when the plastic ruler it is rubbed against the hair it gets charged and when this plastic ruler this charged plastic ruler when it is brought near the bits of paper the bits of paper they get attracted towards this plastic ruler and this is the electrostatic force means the attractive or repulsive force that is acting due to the presence of charges that is electrostatic force now we'll see magnetic force magnetic force means the force with which a magnet attracts magnetic materials is called magnetic force now let us understand what are the magnetic materials magnetic materials means the materials that get attracted towards a magnet they are magnetic materials for example iron we all know that when we bring iron objects close to magnets the iron object that gets attracted to magnet it happens because of the magnetic force so magnets they are the substances that attract the magnetic materials towards them as we can see here these iron nails they have got stick to this magnet because of the magnetic force magnets also apply force on each other let us try to understand each magnet has two poles north pole and south pole when the two different poles of two different magnets they are brought close to each other we will notice that the magnets they will attract each other attract each other means they will come closer to each other because the unlike poles they attract each other unlike poles means the different poles when the different pole when the two different poles of two different magnets they are bring closer to each other they attract each other as we can see in this figure next is the like poles they repel each other like poles means when the same poles of the two different magnets they are bring closer what will happen they will repel each other repel each other means they will move away from each other so the like poles they repel each other and the unlike poles they attract each other now we'll study about frictional force frictional force or friction it acts on two objects that are in contact and at least one of them is in motion and the friction it always acts opposite to the direction of motion 
and because friction acts opposite to the direction of motion it slows down the motion of an object and ultimately stops the moving object the force of friction produced it depends on the nature of the objects in contact rough surfaces they offer more friction than the smooth surfaces let us try to understand it with the help of the example here you can see that it is easy to ride a bicycle on a smooth surface okay on this smooth road it is easy to ride a bicycle as compared to moving a bicycle on this rough road because smooth surfaces they offer less friction and the rough surfaces they offer more friction so now it is clear that the rough surfaces they offer more friction whereas smooth surfaces they offer less friction let us talk about another example if we try to move on ice surface then what will happen it is very difficult to move on an ice surface because ice is very smooth and it offers very less friction because of which we slips down on ice and it is very difficult to move on ice as compared to as we uh, as compared to the moving on road we can very easily move on road because road is not as smooth as ice road offers more friction because of which we can move easily on road so by this example by these examples it is clear that smoother surfaces they offer less friction and the less and the rough surfaces they offer more friction so this is the reason that this is the reason that there are the some patterns are made on the tires of the tires of the vehicles so as to make the tires rough so that the tires they do not slip on road and the vehicles they can easily move on road now we'll study about the advantages of friction friction allows the steady motion of object for example we are able to walk steadily due to the friction between ground and our shoes the grooves on the sole of our shoes provide enough friction grooves on the sole of our shoes means some kind of patterns you might have seen on the sole of our shoes okay these uh, these grooves on the sole of our shoes makes the makes the shoes rough which provides enough friction and that prevents us falling from uh, that prevents us from falling on the road and we can easily move on the we can easily walk on road vehicles they also move steadily on the road because of the friction between the tires and road there are some situations where friction is not needed for example this child he wants to enjoy this ride he wants to slip down okay this surface will be made very smooth so that child can slip down slip down easily and he can enjoy this ride so the smoother surfaces they offer very less friction so the situations where less friction is required the surfaces they are made smooth now let us see another advantage of friction friction produces heat which can be used for different purposes first let us see this example of rubbing hands when we rub our hands together heat is produced due to friction and which makes our hand warm this all this we all have experienced and the second is when the matchstick is struck against the rough surface of a matchbox heat is produced due to friction which lights up the matchstick so now we have studied friction produces heat which is very useful and it can be used for different purposes now after studying advantages of friction now we will see disadvantages of friction with increase in friction it becomes difficult to move an object as more force is needed to overcome friction for example moving heavy objects on a rough surface is difficult because rough surface that offers more friction and to overcome the more friction more force is needed so moving heavy objects on a rough surface is difficult second one is friction causes the surface of an object to wear out 
wear out means the object gets damaged due to the repeated use for example soles of shoes and the surface of tires they wear out because of friction so this was all about the disadvantages of friction and here frictional forces complete now we'll talk about energy the ability to do work is called energy energy is present around us in many forms and we get it from different sources for example during the sun uh, during the daytime the sun gives us light and heat energy at night street lights they use electrical energy to light the roads whether to do any kind of work whether we want to study play we want to sing a song to do any kind of work we need energy and this energy we human beings we get from the food that we eat let us learn about the different forms of energy number 1 is heat energy heat is a form of energy heat is heat energy is obtained from the sun and also by burning fuels like coal petrol and kerosene heat energy is very useful for us for example the heat energy is used for cooking food and it also keeps us warm next is the light energy light energy helps us to see the things present around us in the daytime it is uh, because of the sunlight we are able to see the things around us and in the night time we are able to see the things because of the artificial sources of light like electrical bulb and electrical bulb candle tube lights etc and sun is a natural source of light so light energy it is very helpful for us without light energy we cannot see the things present around us the light energy it is also useful for the plants because plants they also use light energy from the sun to prepare their food the third one is the mechanical energy the energy that an object has due to its position or due to its motion is called mechanical energy mechanical energy is of two type potential energy and kinetic energy let us try to understand potential energy and kinetic energy the energy that any object has due to its position with respect to the ground is called potential energy as we can see here this boy is holding the ball in his hands the ball is not moving ball is at rest the boy is holding this ball so the energy stored in this ball due to its position with respect to the ground is the potential energy and when the boy throws this ball okay when the boy will throw this ball it will move at that moment the potential energy will be converted into the kinetic energy kinetic energy means the energy that any object has due to its motion is called kinetic energy all moving objects they have kinetic energy because kinetic energy is the energy that any object has due to its motion for example a moving car so this was all about the mechanical energy now we'll study about the electrical energy electrical energy is most common and useful form of energy nowadays electrical energy means we are talking about electricity and this form of energy it can be easily converted to other forms of energy for example room heaters they convert electrical energy into heat energy sources of electrical energies are cell generators etc and most of the common most of common household appliances for example television refrigerator air conditioners they run on electrical energy so electrical energy is very useful form of energy now we'll study about sound energy sound is also a form of energy and sound is produced by the vibration of objects let us try to understand about sound energy this is a drum let us uh, let us beat this drum when we will beat this drum we'll notice that the surface of the drum is vibrating now put some pieces of paper on this surface of drum and when you will beat this surface of drum you will notice that pieces of paper they are jumping and why this this is happening because when we are beating the drum when we when we are beating this drum the surface of the drum it vibrates so the sound is produced by the vibration of objects 
and if we talk about the some sources of sound energy they are radios loudspeaker musical instruments etc now we will see wind energy the energy that is obtained from the moving wind is called wind energy and the windmills this is windmill windmills they help in converting the wind energy into electrical energy and we have seen that electrical energy is very useful for us so this was all about the different forms of energy thank you